Everybody, Chris Record here, and welcome back to another edition of the 90 Day Ecom Challenge. This is day 10, and today we are going to mix things up and do them a little bit different. Um, rather than just learning another topic, this is your opportunity to get interactive with us. And so, if you are watching live at any point during today's presentation, I want to reward you by giving you the opportunity to be able to ask questions and get answers live specifically. Uh, for things that maybe you're hung up with on Shopify or things that you maybe want some advice on, whatever it might be. So all you have to do is ask in the actual live stream comments. And so let's go over here to the group. Let's go over here to the discussion. Let's make sure that we're live. Let's make sure audio visual is good. Okay, we are live. You guys should be able to hear me and see me if you can. Let me know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor this post right now live. And you guys have the ability to be able to jump in the comments. And this is a benefit to live viewers. Now, for those of you that are not watching live, if there are any days remaining in the 90 day challenge, do your best to watch live because from time to time we'll break out and we'll do these Q&A sessions to be able to help you. If you have questions outside of the 90 day challenge, outside of the live stream at least, then go into a regular discussion tab in the 90 day Ecom challenge group and ask your question here. Okay, so you can ask your question here, it'll get answered later, but if you want me to answer it live, then ask it right now in the comments, and that's what we're gonna do. So as you can see, everybody's just kinda jumping on right now, you guys are all pouring in. So it sounds like uh, it looks good, we can see, we can hear, um, we are excited. And so, with that, being good, uh, with that being said, let me just kinda jump in and let's talk about this. So what I'm gonna do is, um, Ask me some questions in the comments of the Facebook Live, okay? That's where I'm gonna basically take questions. If I don't see enough questions there, then I'll go and I'll answer questions just from the group. But if you guys wanna participate, if you have a store that you would like me to take a look at, feel free to drop it in there. Um, but you gotta give me as much description as possible. The more specific your questions are, the better. Let me write that. Um, the more specific your questions are, the better. And then I won't be able to answer all of the questions. I'll pick at random, okay? Because, I mean, some questions are just gonna be longer, more detailed. Maybe some of the questions I'm gonna answer in a future um, presentation or something like that. I'll just do my best. So if your question doesn't get answered, don't get upset. We'll do our best for that and, and we'll keep going. So let me do this. Let me go ahead and refresh here. Again, we got a bunch of us on live. Who is, um, who's not afraid to ask a question? And um, let's go. Okay, so see, Dana, see how you posted your, your link? That's good. Post your link to your store, but could you do me a favor? Could you do it? Could you edit that post or could you do it again where you ask me something specific? Like, what is it that you're looking for? What feedback you're looking for? Don't just drop a link, just kind of go, what feedback? Okay, so you see the questions are starting to pour in. I'll do my best um, to be able to uh, do it. Okay, let's kind of go through these. Travis, if I have a clothing store, is there any way I can still put other products without confusing customers? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start taking these and posting them in here, okay? Question, if I have a clothing store, is there any way I can still put other products without confusing customers? Um, yes, just put your products in other categories on the site, on your store. In my previous um, live streams, I've shown several examples of stores that have one main niche focus, like clothing in your case, but still have categories of several other products, okay? For example, um, we looked at this site, uh, Phone BB. This is a site that's all about phones, okay? But if you go to this site, look at this, kitchen and household, uh, health and beauty, pet accessories, car, et cetera, and even clothes. Like, look at this site even has clothes. So the bottom line is like, you look at something like this, look at this, Cami Secret, it's like a women's uh, clip-on Cami. Um, a bra, what does a bra have to do with phones? You see what I'm saying? Like, like pet accessories has nothing to do with phones. That's how they've done it. So if you wanna see, this is how you could do it. You could have your main site, Phone BB, and it's got a lot of phone-related stuff here on the homepage. So what you do is, um, let's get a little bit more specific with this answer. Um, what you would do is have your homepage feature your main collection of niche related items, such as your clothing items. Or you can even feature several collections of clothing items, such as a 
t-shirt collection, a uh, shoes collection, you know, um, whatever it is, you know, swimwear collection, all on the home page. Okay, so you want to do that like all on your home page. Then have a drop down menu at the top navigation that links to other collections. So most people will will see your main niche store and not be confused, but you can also feature other items. Just don't feature them on the home page or it might look like a general store. Example, and we'll use phone BB here as an example. Okay. There you go. Hopefully that was a hopefully that was a good uh, good answer. Okay, uh, for you. Okay, so we answered that one there. I'll go ahead and like that. One. Okay, let's see what else. How long should we wait until changing ads from engagement to conversions? Okay, how long should we wait until changing ads from engagement to conversions? Leticia. Um, let me do this. How long should we wait until changing ads from engagement to conversions? Um, there is no reason to wait. You can run conversion ads right off the bat. Conversion ads are helpful for telling Facebook to optimize to show your ad to people likely to buy. But conversion ads are likely to convert. Let's change that. Likely to convert, um, which might, might start as... Um, converting people to view content, then you might convert people to add products to your shopping cart. Then you might convert people to make purchases. But conversion ads are definitely a great idea. Post engagement ads serve a purpose of getting more likes, comments, shares, video, views, etc. They can work for purchases. I often get a lot from PPE ads, but that's not their main purpose. Their main function is to help give you social proof that your post is very popular. People are more likely to buy from a post that has a lot of engagement than from one without it. So the answer is to run those side by side. Run PPE ads to help um, give your post more social proof and run conversion ads to help your post get more visitors to your store, more people to add products to the shopping cart, and of course, more people to purchase from your store. Okay, there's a detailed answer for you. Hopefully that was helpful. And that was for Leticia. Um, Dave, please tell us about your must-have Shopify plugins. Um, let's see. Please tell us, Dave says, please tell us about your must-have Shopify plugins. Um, what you are referring to is Shopify apps. We will have an entire day in the 90-day challenge purely dedicated to this topic. For now, here is a quick look at some apps that... that are installed in a store that I ha happen to have open right now. Video shows the app, so I don't have to write them down. Okay, so let's go into Bougie Boutique. Let's see, apps. I just happen to have this up, so let's just go in here. Okay, so um, there is a Shopify app store. When you go into your Shopify admin account, there's apps. These are like plugins. These basically, and you can go to the Shopify app store right here. And it takes you over to a Shopify app store where you can go and you can install things into your Shopify site. 
Well, here's some basics, okay? 90 day challenge by Techademics. You must have this app installed and connected if you wanna participate in our 90 day challenge. So this is a must have. It is a private app. You get this app by going to, um, to logging into Techademics and completing the seven steps. It's a private app. We don't even feature it in the store, okay? Abandonment protector, this one right here. When people add products to your cart, but then they, they don't, um, then they leave and they don't check out, this will send them some emails, kind of like an autoresponder trying to get them back to the cart. So this is like, it's worth its own money for the fees. Contact form, it's just a simple way to have people contact you. Receipts, um, print on demand sites, um, bulk edit ordering. Um, this right here gives social proof. You know, Cindy from Kansas City just purchased XYZ product, stuff like that. Um, free plus shipping, free shipping apps. A countdown timers are always good. Um, to create some, uh, some urgency. Um, another print on demand. MailChimp is good if you wanna start building your own customer email list. Order limits if you're selling a lot of free plus shipping items and you want to limit the um, amount that people can get. Um, and that's good enough. Some retargeting, Shopify app um, is like an Oberlow type of an app. Some of these cost money, some of them are free, but there's a good list. So let's just kinda, let's kinda keep cruising through. Okay? Um, Let's see, I think I'm losing a lot of uh, questions, so I'll just do my best. Um, if we find a product that sells, should we increase ad budget for that ad or try to improve it further? Um, should I lost that, that question. Let me, uh, they're coming in so fast. Question, if we find a product that is selling well, should we increase the ad budget? Okay, and I basically answered this the other day um, what I would do is, no, don't change anything about an, a Facebook ad that is converting well. As soon as you make changes, it resets Facebook's um, kind of like, we'll call it just the ad algorithm for lack of a better name, okay? So don't edit any of your existing ads that are converting. Instead, launch new ads. Um, if you want to scale up something that is successful, scale out instead. Launch more ad campaigns and test more, okay? It's a simple answer. Okay, hi everybody. Um, Mustafa wants me to review a store. I'll come back to store reviews. I'm gonna skip store reviews for a little bit. I'm just gonna kinda of come in here and make sure I get in some questions. Um, did you have a situation where PayPal freezes your savings? Question. Um, shoot, what's going on here? Hopefully, disk space is low. Jeez, why do I have low disk space? You guys, I'm sorry for having computer problems. It's my, uh, my fault for having computer problems here. That's on me, I'm using this laptop that I've literally got. Lately I downloaded um, all of my videos and I just haven't had time to move them over to, um, to Dropbox, so I'm a little stuck. Let's hopefully it saved some of those questions. Okay, question. Um, um, I'll rename your question. Can PayPal or um, Alipay or Shopify Pay, sorry. Pay Stripe, freeze some of your funds. Answer, if you are drop shipping from China, then it's risky for merchants like PayPal and Stripe. So they may freeze some of your funds. For example, Shopify Pay, and we're gonna call it Stripe, because really Stripe is doing it, may send you an email saying that they are going to hold 25% of your funds for 90 days to ensure that you are actually delivering the product to your customers. As long as chargebacks are less than 1%, over the 90 days, they will 
unfreeze the funds. This is a very typical practice for anyone who is generating any kind of money online. Merchants have to offset their risk by putting some money in reserves. So if this happens, don't freak out. Just perform well during those 90 days and the money will be released and you will have a good track record with your merchant, okay? Um, PayPal is not as nice. They can be difficult to work with. Sometimes they will put a big hold, sometimes a small hold, sometimes no hold at all. If it happens, just deal with it on a case by case basis. This is an issue that all successful entrepreneurs and companies deal with online. So, it, and offline, actually online, but we'll just put online. So if you ever plan on being successful online and making a lot of money, you will likely have to deal with merchant account issues at some point. I've like pretty much never met an entrepreneur that has made a lot of money that hasn't dealt with this. Why? Because merchants have to be careful, okay? Um, and this is an official, official notice. You are, this is official notice to all of you. You are accepting money from your customers. You have a fiduciary, a fiduciary responsibility to ensure that they get the products that they have ordered. This is your responsibility. You are choosing to pass that task on to a drop shipper so that you don't have to order the inventory yourself and ship it yourself. But it's still your responsibility. You need to accept that responsibility and do a great job with it. Okay? This is important for you guys to understand that this is your responsibility. Okay? Um, so, because there is risk, such as 1,000 customers buying a product from you and you don't ship it to them for various reasons, the merchant could deal with a ton of chargebacks. Because of that, they need to be very careful when you are drop shipping, especially from China. Okay, more than more than almost anywhere. Okay. Um, alternative solution. You can use a print on demand company <clears throat> based out of the United States and then you likely won't or let's say you will be much less likely you will then you will be much less likely to face a big hold on your funds alternative solution 2 that's alternative solution 1 alternative solution 2 if you do get a hold on your funds, you can use a print-on-demand site and sell directly on their platform and allow them to collect the funds through their merchant and pay you out um, every week or two weeks, such as you know Gearbubble.com viralstyle.com teespring.com and so on okay those are some solutions okay let's keep going 
Okay, um, we'll do site reviews in a minute. Is it possible to start a Shopify business to sell in the U.S. and manage it? We're going to be covering that. Um, international questions we're going to be covering uh, this week in a, full, in a full webinar. So any international questions we're going to cover. Um, how can I remove shipping from China and copyright? That's not clear enough. Let me go up here a little bit. Let's see. Let's see how many questions. We've got a lot of questions coming in. Let me refresh. I kind of fill out some of these questions. Again, I'm not going to be able to answer all of them. I'm just going to do my best. Okay. Um, let's kind of go down here to the middle. Okay. How to target for women's clothing and accessories. Um, we'll have to save that for a Facebook advertising one because that would take a while. Um, these collections. This one, he's, uh, Richard's answering you, Travis. If you have a question, Richard's answering it right here. From your experience, okay, this, this, is, a, a, this is a site. Dana, that's exactly what I wanted. Um, but let's do, site, let's do site reviews in a little bit. Let me go a few more questions, then we'll do site reviews. Um, how is shipping handled when you sell on Gearbubble? Do I charge the shipping? That's a Gearbubble question. You can ask Gearbubble. Hi, Chris. My store defaults in Euro. Can I change it to dollar? Okay, we'll have to cover that. Let's see. Is it possible to have dropshipping center? Um, these are a lot of these might be a little too complicated right now for beginners. Um, paying for customer orders when you don't have the money to cover it until your store builds its own bank. How long for Shopify releases customer payments? Um, Chris, yeah, I think I just covered that 90 days. What is the best way to capture emails from visitors? Okay, I'll cover that one. You guys, I can't answer every question, so I'm just kind of handpicking ones I think would be valuable uh, to the majority of people. Let's see. What is the best way to capture emails from visitors? Do pop-up coupons work well or just annoy people? Um, if you have a free plus, sh uh, free plus shipping offer, then everyone who abandons the cart, okay, so no, I'll, I'll make it a little more clear, then everyone who adds that product to their cart and begins the checkout process will be um, adding their email to your list. This is one of the best ways to build a huge list of highly targeted people. Um, okay, so free plus shipping offer is probably one of the best. Outside of a free plus shipping offer, there are many apps that you can use to capture email addresses using your store navigation bar or pop-up boxes and so on. My advice is to find some other stores that are doing it well and model after them. You can even join their email lists and see what kind of emails they are sending to their potential customers. Okay, that's a good, some, good, some good stuff there for people. Okay, we'll do, uh, we're gonna do, in a minute, we're gonna do store review. So everybody's been posting a store review, I'm gonna have to do this again. Um, let's see, because these are all, the store reviews are great. I'm gonna do store reviews in like 10 minutes, okay? Your Facebook shop has been disabled. I've only had, I've since removed, da, 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 da. And if your Facebook shop's been disabled, don't even bother using a Facebook shop. Just don't even worry about it. Skip that for now, come back to it later. Just use your Shopify store and don't even worry about Facebook shops. Um, Bobby, I have a line of custom embroidery. What would be the best way to handle setup on shop, Shopify? And also have other items I don't carry in stock and want to use POD for some items. Um, uh, let's see, I'll do that one real quick. We'll just do a quick answer for this one. Um, I have a line of, we're gonna change this to say, my own products that I have in inventory. What would be the best way to handle setup on Shopify? Okay, if you want to sell your own products, that's great. Just upload images of them plus a good title and description and you can put um, and you can use the inventory 
option when you are editing a product. So if you have five of them available, you would put inventory equals five. Um, when a customer orders the product, just like they normally would, you would then ship it to them directly instead of using a drop shipper. This is also a great idea to sell things you have around the house. You can even sell used items on your Shopify store. Just take good pictures and make sure you let them know that it's used. Okay? There you go. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, that's a Facebook ads. On average, how long does it take for the first sale to occur when running ads? That's different for everybody, Timothy. Every single one's different. Some people get their first day. Some people don't get a don't get a sale for the first month. Um, for me, it took me like months to get sales because I just wasn't very good at this stuff. I I, I had to spend a long time learning this all. That's why I'm so knowledgeable now because it took me so long to learn it. Um, <laughs> Dan, is a $5 a day Facebook ad spend for five days the same as $25 on one day? Um, we'll take a stab at that one. Is a $5 a day Facebook ad spend for $5 the same as $25 in one day? Um, no, they aren't the same. Ads, uh, Facebook tends to mature an ad as it runs for a few days. So day one results of an ad will generally vary from day two and day three. That's why we often recommend allowing an ad to run for a few days to see if it gets results. For example, you might, um, for example, you might run a $5 a day ad and on day one and day two you get no sales. Then on day three you get four sales. Well, you would have likely canceled that ad or paused. You would have likely paused that ad well before day three. But now that you know it can convert, you would leave it running. And I'll put this for example, one of my highest converting ads didn't make any sales at all for the first full week. Then it popped its first sale. Next thing you know, it was doing several sales per day. So there is no right or wrong answer, but generally speaking, let your ads run for a few days. I don't know if that's exactly what you were doing, but that's some good information regardless. Um, how do you set up your shipping? Go to uh, day one of the 90 day challenge. I think we cover that in day one or day two. It's a, that's covered in one of the first couple days of the 90 day challenge. Um, you can also go to ecomtutor.com. Um, okay, Michael, the free shipping uh, scheme you gave us a few days. Okay, let me see if I can let me see if I can read this, understand this. I don't want anybody, um, I don't want anybody at all uh, confused on that. So hold on, let me see if I can handle that. Let's see, the free shipping um, instead of scheme, let's call it idea. A scheme could be good or bad. Um, it was definitely a good scheme. The free shipping idea you gave us a few days ago has me bewildered a little bit when it gets to 75 so how do I not lose money there okay so um, here are the basics of free shipping um, or the free shipping idea actually I didn't give you a free shipping idea I think I, I think the idea you're referring to is um, you might need to clarify this here's the basics of free shipping you can offer your customers free shipping on anything they purchase, just make sure you mark 
up the product with enough profit that you don't that that you are still profitable even with shipping. Oh, sorry, even without receiving money for shipping. If you are referring to free plus shipping offers, that's where you give away a product for free and you just charge shipping to a customer. Um, this is a great strategy for very inexpensive items that don't have a high perceived value such as a little pendant that you would put on a necklace. It's tiny and doesn't look expensive so it's good to give away free. You make your money by charging shipping on that product. So let's say it costs you five dollars to buy it and ship it to the customer. If you charge $9.95 shipping then you make four dollars and ninety five cents profit. Let's say that you spend two dollars and ninety five cents in Facebook ads to acquire that customer then your total profit is two dollars after all expenses. That's why it's such a great business model. Plus everyone that adds that product to your shopping cart but then gets turned away when they see high shipping in that case $9.95 and they don't purchase they are still on your email list so you can mail them offers and retarget them for new products and so on. If you can get profitable with free plus shipping offers you can build a massive business. Okay, Hopefully that's enough. I know that, that might not have been exactly uh, what you wanted. Um, surveys. I don't know if I want to handle surveys. How do you know? You guys, the main thing that you guys should be asking me is questions of where you're stuck, not just ideas for stuff. You know, you really should be, if you guys aren't making money yet, you really should be looking and saying, where are you stuck? Like what's holding you back? What's stopping you that maybe that you didn't understand? Um, let's see. Do we have to do page posts on our Facebook page before running PPE or do we create those ads in the background? Richard, yes. Um, make posts on your fan page and then run P PPE, page post engagement ads to them. Charles, is it really as easy as finding one niche product to sell on a very basic Shopify store and send traffic via Facebook targeting? You know, I've spent a lot of time getting website aesthetics. That's a good question. Okay, question. Is it really as easy as finding one niche product to sell on a very basic Shopify store and sending traffic to it via Facebook advertising? You don't have to spend a lot of time on getting the website aesthetics. Aesthetics. The answer is yes. And that's it. There's your answer. It's just a bare, that's exactly it. That's exactly what we do. Uh, international sellers this week. Amazing solution. Today I received an email from one of my customers asking for a refund. He tells me you guys gave a fake tracking number. We didn't give anything. We're not sending it to you. Uh, I think you're talking about you. Somebody's telling you you gave a fake tracking. Um, okay, so let me just clarify. We don't, we don't handle your tracking. I think you just meant to say that a little differently. Okay, today I received an email from one of my customers. He asked me for if I tell me that I gave him a fake tracking number, but I have tried. Its tracks number works well. What should I do? That is a customer support situation. You need to do your best to learn how to handle customer support and deal with customers who sometimes will be happy and sometimes will be mad or confused or frustrated 
and so on. In that scenario, be as professional as possible, always, and take screenshots showing them that their tracking number works and that they can see their package and explain to them um, any other information to help satisfy them. Sometimes you will have to give refunds. That's part of the business. If they return the product to you in its original packaging and you have it clearly outlined in your refund rules how you handle refunds then you can give them a refund and you can resell that package to another customer when that new customer orders then you ship that product directly to them yourself instead of using a drop shipper. That new customer will also get it faster most likely because they don't have to wait for the drop for the longer shipping times from China and so on. Okay, let's keep going a couple more. We're almost ready for store reviews. Okay, Jennifer says, should free plus be hidden from the store and only shown in Facebook ads or do you recommend having them show in the store inventory? Question, should free plus, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and update this question for you, Jennifer. Should free plus shipping offers, should free plus shipping offers be hidden from your, st your store and only shown in Facebook ads or do you recommend having them showing in the store inventory? Generally, you want to have a collection of products that are your free plus shipping offers. Um, and it makes more sense to have them in their own drop down slash category on your store. Um, it's okay to show them on your store inventory but it's better when you categorize them like that. Okay. Um, yes, in your Facebook ads, it's good to mention that the product is free, just pay shipping. Okay. So like an example um, is over here on Phone BB, you know, you'll look and you'll see like on their site, their product, this one's 11, 15, 11, 10, 6, 11, 11, 11, 6, 7, 10, 10. You see, they don't have any free, they don't have anything here that says zero, right? But they might be running, a, uh, uh, they might be running an offer, okay, for, for a zero. So what you could do is you could have like, like a category right here maybe, like creative others gifts. You could have a category like that and you could say like, um, deals of the day, you know, um, daily deals or deals of the day or something like that. And then if you have like an extra category, that's where you could put like something that's maybe like a free plus shipping item. And then, you know, you could put like zero, um, you could, you could put like a little note, like this one says, wow, Nighthawk glasses, glasses case included. You could say, um, currently free, just pay shipping. So you could do like, wow, Nighthawk, Nighthawk glasses, currently free, just pay shipping. And then it, this could say zero, zero. So you could have them like, just put them in like a category down here, come up with some cool name for where your, where your free plus shipping offers are, put them in a category and then link directly to them with your ads, okay? Um, should we add social proof of Google Plus, Instagram, Twitter, and stuff in the beginning of starting out with Shopify? Let me see if I can rephrase that a little bit. Should we add social proof of sites like Google Plus, Instagram, Twitter, and stuff in the beginning of starting out with Shopify. In the beginning, that won't matter as much at all. You don't need 
any fans to start making sales. Sure, it will help in the long run, but don't put much time into building out those profiles because you might end up going a completely different direction at some point. So you want the freedom to not be locked in to those social media sites. Just keep them basic to start off and focus on sales and profits, which is really the only thing that matters. Okay, almost ready for some store reviews. I'm gonna go 10 more minutes and then we're gonna do some store reviews. 10 minutes, then store reviews, okay? So in 10 minutes, if you guys want store reviews at the top of the hour, I'm gonna do store reviews. I'm gonna go 10 more minutes with questions. Um, dun, 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 dun. How to do different price shipping in one product. How can we set up different prices for shipping of one product? Okay, if you want to offer different shipping prices for a single product, it's better to upload that product twice in your store. Each time you give it a different weight, which will determine how much the customer is charged in shipping. For example, um, product upload one, you charge $9.95 and give free shipping. Product upload two, you charge zero and give $9.95 shipping, okay? If you even want to do it again, product upload three, you charge $2 and give $7.95 shipping. $2 and, and charge, let's just say charge, not give. Charge, charge, okay? In all three instances, so in all three instances, you collect, collected the same 9.95 for the product. Generally speaking, it's better to upload the product just once to your store. But if you needed to test out different prices and shipping, that's a way to do it. Okay? Okay, uh, eight more minutes. Bobby, Bobby Joe says, awesome idea. I never thought about items around the house being sold. I just have my stadium blankets that I custom embroidered with a customer's product. That's awesome. Um, thanks for being so candid and revealing. It took you a long time. Gives me confidence. Yeah, it, it took me like, people think, oh, but Chris, you're, you're so smart. You, you know so much. When I first started, I knew nothing. Ecom was intimidated for me. I avoided it for like the first year because it was intimidating. Everything was so intimidating to me. That's also why I'm passionate to teach others because it was intimidating for me and I can help you know, shorten this learning curve for everybody else. Um, if I have a few different ads running at the same time, okay, hold on, go that, do that one. Question, if I have a few different ads running at the same time, how do I know which one has caused a sale? You would use Facebook Pixel, okay? In your ads account, you create a Facebook pixel ID. You add that pixel ID to your Shopify store. Then you run conversion ads and Facebook will tell you if you got a sale from the ad or not. Facebook tracking is Okay, let's just be clear about that. It's not perfect. Ultimately, 
Shopify will tell you whether you are getting sales or not. Facebook Ads Manager is just a good way to see the effectiveness of your ads and whether they are converting. We will cover this more in a future challenge training. A future e-com challenge training. Okay. I'll just put challenge training. All right. Um, six more minutes. Small country, people don't have a lot of money, had a lot of seller, but had a lot of sellers. We have a small production for nail care. What is your advice strategy? We need to concentrate sales in my country. Um, I don't know, that's really, I don't really have advice for that. Um, my advice is sell to people in the United States um, and ship it there. Um, thanks for everybody else helping everybody else with the questions, thank you. Could you give suggestions regarding targeting watches? Uh, I don't know if I wanna get, I don't know if I wanna dive into um, Facebook ads right now. Um, I think that would be a little too, too crazy. Um, all the keywords see to go only to the big expensive brands. Um, you know, just, just get better at, you know, in, anytime you're brainstorming, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe just quickly dive in on this, but I'm not gonna really go in heavy on this, okay? Just gonna do a real quick one for you. Okay, so could you give suggestions regarding targeting watches? Okay. When targeting any niche or product um, market, you want to first start by creating a brainstorm of all the potential related things to that niche. For example, if your main niche was golf, then you would start a brainstorm like this. And you would start with, um, you would do like golf, and then you would do golf players, golf tournaments, golf associations, golf magazines or maybe media, golf movies and TV shows, um, golf accessories slash gear and so on um, when you brainstorm like this your goal is to find groups of topics related to that niche that you wouldn't have otherwise thought of and those are sometimes the best keywords to target for example, I'll often look for associations or clubs, groups, that, that um, very passionate fans would be, would, um, would be members of because they are a much more highly targeted and passionate audience. Example, and I'll give you another example. Instead of just targeting people interested in hunting, I might target um, people that are members of certain hunting associations slash organizations, and maybe people that are interested and are members of people me, people that are member members of clubs and groups related to guns, which is loosely related to um, hunting. Same with uh, and and just basically start diving as deep as you can. Use that same methodology for any niche, such as watches. And you will, you will get tons of ideas of cool keywords to target that have much more passionate buyers. Um, for example, um, people that like these types of watches also like blank. You know, 
what um, types of magazines do they read? What other things are they interested in? What types of associations and clubs are they likely to be members of? When you visit popular sites in those niches, are those sites also showcasing other items that are related to watches, ETC? So when you do your research, you'll, you'll end up finding a lot of that, okay? But I don't want to dive in further than that because that'll take too long. Okay, guys, two minutes. Um, dun, dun, dun. Uh, what do I think about future pay? I don't use future pay. I, I just want, it's, it's easy enough to collect the money up front. I don't want to take the risk of not being able to collect it later. Um, uh, my ad copy seems to have a good effect, but I'm getting abandoned carts now. That, that's good. Abandoned carts are great. You're, yeah, for, you know, you're, you know, let me put that in there because this is a very good thing. Um, this is a good thing. Here are your goals from your FB ads in this order. Okay, let's put a, put a one, two, three. One, um, FB ads get traffic to your store. Okay, so first, it's all about getting traffic to your store. You get um, products, adding products to the cart. Okay, that's the next one. And then Facebook ads get sales of your products. Okay, so first you wanna go for traffic. Next, you want to go adding products to the cart, and next, you want to get sales. Okay, you want to go in, in that. And you want to get that from Facebook ads. I put Facebook ads because traffic from other sources won't matter as much. Traffic from Facebook ads is scalable, and you can directly tell if it's profitable or not. So, Facebook ads get traffic to your store, then Facebook ads get visitors adding products to your cart, to their cart, and then Facebook ads get sale of your products. So, they kind of go in that order. If you're getting traffic, that's good. But right now, you're in the phase where you're getting. Um, Cart abandonments, that's good. And then each step along the way, you make, you make tweaks. So if you're getting a lot of traffic, but people aren't adding products to the cart, then either it's a bad source of traffic or you're not converting well. Like maybe your ad copy is not converting well. People aren't adding it to cart. So let's say you make the tweaks there. Now you got people adding products to your cart. Okay, that's great, but now they're abandoning your cart. Well, then you need to start tweaking. If they're adding products to the cart and they're abandoning, something's either broken with the process or the sh that's a clear sign that the shipping's too high. Try you know, free shipping and see if it converts some sales. Then start raising the price of the shipping and see, see what you can do to try to figure out where's that middle ground that doesn't scare people away. And then you start getting sales of your product, then Facebook will start optimizing to find more buyers. Okay, so um, that's, that's a good amount. Okay, so let's go. Now let's do some uh, rapid fire store reviews, okay? This is gonna be rapid fire, okay? If you guys want some quick rapid fire store reviews, um, place a link uh, to your store and try to tell me something about it, okay? I'm only, now I'm gonna switch it. I'm only gonna focus on stores real quick. We're just gonna do some rapid fire. Post your link and tell me something about it. Don't just post your link, otherwise I, 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 I won't even know where to get started. You know, just post your link and say something about it. Drive me to a section. I can't obviously go through your whole thing. I'm gonna try to do like, a couple minutes per store max. So where do you want me to look, you know, to give you some feedback? And sorry for everybody didn't get your questions answered. If you guys didn't get your questions answered, um, you can go to the discussion tab and you can ask them there um, after this live stream, okay, if it's a big question. But for now, let's, uh, let's refresh this and I'm only gonna look for site, I'm only gonna look for posts that have links that have the picture show up. So see how these pictures are showing up? If you post your link and a picture doesn't show up, then it's gonna be hard for me. Okay, hi Chris, I've been doing all-nighters to get this completed. Would love to hear your take on this. 
Um, that's a pretty – Christopher, that's too generic of a thing. We'll start with you since I read it. But um, it's too generic. Your take on this – I mean I don't want to do a take on it, but um, I'll use it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do this one as an example. Okay, we got Pretty Choker. Um, let's do a quick, quick review of it. So here's prettychoker.com and let's take a look at it. First of all, I'd say it's got a good clean design. It's got nice um, social proof here of people buying products. I like, the, I like the use of the colors. I like the theme. Um, everything looks great here. I like the pictures. I like that it's niche specific on chokers. Um, let's go into some of these categories. I like it's got some urgency, some scarcity, some discounts, free worldwide delivery. Um, you know, I would say um, free shipping up here. You know, you've got um, you've got the ability to have it in USD. It's not defaulting to USD. It didn't default to USD for me. So if you're targeting people in the United States, um, you might want to default it to uh, United States dollars. Um, and it's got kind of like you know, I mean, this is okay. These categories aren't really as specific, but you're linking directly into them. Let's take a look at some of your individual products. Diamante Flower Classic Choker. It's got a good good use of a name, good use of an image. Um, this is good. Good, good, good. 2351. The variants are good. Um, subtotal, add to wish list. Okay, again, if you're targeting people in the United States, um, if it, it sounds like you're targeting people in several countries, which is okay. But as a beginner, if you're not making sales, you probably want to start with just one country and, and go from there. Um, this is not good. This, this get a better, get a bigger description. Um, I would give a bigger description. Customer reviews. You have no reviews, um, no reviews yet. Um, I don't know if this app gives you the ability to hide it when there's no reviews. But when there's when there's no reviews. It makes it look like a uh, an app. It makes it look like something's unpopular. So the first person to buy this is going to take more risk. Once you have some reviews, it's going to be a little bit better. So I don't know if this app right that you're using right here gives you the ability to be able to hide the uh, reviews. You could always, and if you ever have a question about apps, you could always talk to the app developer. But what I'd probably do is I'd probably hide the reviews until you actually have reviews on of your product. And if you don't have any reviews on your site because you only have like one sale or two sales, then you might want to hide reviews and add those later when you start getting um, some stuff going on. Um, but let's just go through a quick little purchase. Let's just make sure, let's go add to cart, continue shopping, okay, everything's good. It added up in the cart. So it's right up here in this cart. Let's just go, to, let's check out to the cart. Check out. And ta -ta -ta, my, my computer's going slow. It's not probably not Shopify. Okay, pretty choker. Um, it's got PayPal, it's got customer information, $19. Again, I switched, so there's, it's switching me back to GPP. Um, I mean, for me personally, if this was, this, this would make it so I wouldn't purchase. So you, you just lost me as a customer because I, I'm having trouble in the United States clicking the link, viewing it, and purchasing in my own thing. So it feels like it's some international site. I'm, I'm gonna be turned away from that. So it all really depends on where you're targeting. That's why I try to tell people to start with the United States. I keep things a lot simpler. Start with the United States, put everything in US dollars, and go from there um, as being the best way. Okay, so there's some of my feedback. I would say, I would say um, overall, great uh, store, great design, good name, good look and feel um, as a US customer it was a little bit of a turnoff to not easily see US pricing also the um, the product I looked at had zero reviews felt unpopular room for improvement but overall very good Great job. Okay, who's next? Who's next? I'm just gonna have to like pick one. All right, so let's just pick one. Here we go. Chris, can you see how my video, Chris, can you see how my videos on my mug product? Okay, let's let's look at some videos here on this mug product. Um, so we're gonna take this site here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, let's close down this one. Let's go this one. Okay, first let's go, uh, they got a pop up here. 
fish on 3602 where you get the best for less get your free 12 pieces insect lure set on us when you join the e-club limited time offer while supplies lap 1295 value free like we say fish on so they got a nice little offer right there um and then i'll kind of go in here and put some notes um i don't understand the 30, 3602 okay i don't understand what that is um but it, it, it might be a thing. It, that fisher, just because I don't understand it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It might be a thing that, that fishing people understand. Um, so let's look at this. They got all their items on sale here. 1595 mugs. They've got a bunch of um, fishing designs. Customizable, changing color. Mom's fishing mug. It makes a great gift. Um, like we say, fish on. There aren't many things I love more than fishing but one of them is being a mom um, so they got a color changing mug claim your mug here okay that that didn't make sense um, I don't know I don't know how I can claim my mug here in cart um, so I'm not I'm not quite sure what I'm not sure I'm not quite sure why you have a, a link here linking to the cart this part's a little bit confusing um, so let's go through um, a little confusing to claim items by clicking cart before I've added anything to the cart. Um, descriptions shouldn't be in all in all caps. Okay, um, this it's a little just a little a uh, lot going on here. Um, I wouldn't do that all in, in all caps. Um, you've got videos of each one. Mom love fishing. So let's go to your YouTube channel, Sam Alston Jr. Is that you, Sam Alston Jr.? I couldn't. I can't remember um, where you were that I clicked on it right here. Yeah, Sam Alston. Okay. So I like that you have that. As long as it's you, all caps. Um, I like that you have your videos on your YouTube channel embedded in your descriptions. Um, are these your original designs or are you copying them from other sellers? If so, don't copy designs exactly. It's a bad practice. They are original designs. Good job. Okay. Um, so customize, customizable changing mug. Let's go ahead and add to cart. So now that I've added to cart, see, I don't need to claim anything. And then this this thing keeps popping up. This shouldn't, the pop-up should only pop up once. Um, the email pop-up should only pop up once. Let me, let me go ahead and change this format here. This is gonna be a little bit too confusing if I keep doing it like this. Um, let me go ahead and put these in. I think that's going to be more easy for people to understand. I just realized. Um, this will just take me a second for better organization, and then we'll do the rest like this. Just basic, basic bullet points will be better like that. I think. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. Um, Let's see. Hold on one second. I'm trying to do this so you can all follow along a little bit easier. Just a little clean up really quick. I don't like to do it live, but it'll be a little bit easier since we're doing a bunch right now. Okay. Um, the email pop-up should only pop up once. It's annoying popping up a bunch. See if you can fix that. Sometimes it might be a little bit difficult. Let's go back to the YouTube channel, custom changing fishing mug. Um, this It's from your Sam Alston Jr. Um, page. Um, what I would have done is um, for YouTube videos, I would have created a brand page with brand username, not your Sam Alston um, Jr. one because it doesn't make any sense here because you're going to want to have maybe more niches and it just kind of doesn't make sense. So you'd probably want to do like, you know, your fishing, your fishing site. Just create a YouTube channel for your fishing site. 
Okay. Um, you know, where, where are you doing this from? Are you integrating with a third party seller? Like, is this third party seller? Is this like Gearbubble or something like that? Is this a print on demand company that you're integrating with? Um, color changing mug. So go in your shop, uh, check out. Okay, customizable color changing mom's fishing nug. It makes a great gift. Okay, I mean, it's all looking pretty good. Uh, I think that's enough of a review right there. And let's keep going. Okay, let's go again. Let's do a refresh. And let's see where we're at. By the way, thanks everybody for popping on. There's hundreds of you on live. Okay, let's go down. Uh, yeah, Sam says, yeah, gear bubble. Good job. I think it's a good job. Um, I'm going to put that right there. Good use of integrating gear bubble print on demand. Okay, let's go with another store. Who's it going to be? Um, can you give me advice what you would modify in my store? We're going for the jewelry beginning, now change more of a general store. Okay. Let's try this Zeus Emporium. Okay. Zeus Emporium. Let's go check it out. Okay. Email pop up. Okay. Um, two email pop ups in a row. Okay. I, right off the bat, I would only do one. Um, only one email pop up instead of two. The second one was better. This one right here, it looks a lot better. Sign up and get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, that one's, that one's a lot better, okay? 10% uh, off one. Ditch the other one. Just doesn't make sense, you don't need it, okay? Um, real basic, real simple theme. It's got, got some social proof, got some live chat, Okay, um, the homepage should have the homepage should have more products on it. Okay, um, homepage should have more collections featured on it. Okay, that's not like extremely it's not extremely important. But if somebody did go to your homepage, why not? You already have all this stuff. Why not have it all? Why not have the collections featured? You should have the products featured on your, or something cleaner. It just doesn't look as good when there's like. It makes it look like there's just one product on your site. Um, so let's go in. You got men's jewelry, women's jewelry. So see, look at all these products you have on your site. You got so many products. Your home, so your homepage is a bit bare. Um, homepage is a bit bare for how many products you actually have. Again, you're not driving people to your homepage, but if somebody goes to your homepage, just making sure you're a legit site, it would look good if you had either like a lot of products on your page or a better slider or something like that. Okay, so you've got um, good job having a lot of products. That's a good thing. Uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Let's go ahead and choose a product. Four pieces, leather rope beads, and anchor bracelets cuff. Um, lack of descriptions. Will, lack of descriptions will cause less conversions. Um, product pages could use more scarcity and urgency. They are pretty simple. Customers um, need more impulse buying um, elements. They need they need more reasons. They need to be sold. This is this is like your sales page right here. Right, so you gotta, you gotta look at this and you gotta go, okay, this is my sales page. This is my chance to be able to sell them. Like literally to sell them and it's just, there's just not much here selling me uh, of anything. So you wanna, you wanna kinda j jump in and, and give, you know, focus on selling them more. Okay, let's take a look at your free plus shipping item. A little better. Um, yeah, but not really. Uh, it just, you really could go on and explain and like why this why this product in the first place like what is it about this product that's even any good why would i even want this product you know like it doesn't i don't see the i don't see the niche um i don't see the angle you have this category called cell phone cases but you really don't have any cell phone cases in there and these flower cases aren't even really um 
selling me that well. Um, let's see. Here's products that are on sale. Okay, so you've got a lot of good products. So let's just take another random one really quick. Yeah, really no description. Um, it looks like you're just importing in and copying things. I would say uh, my advice would be, my advice is to take a few products that have clear niche audiences to advertise to and focus heavily on those with ads directly to them. Fix up the descriptions and focus on using copywriting to sell them on why they should purchase right away. Use more scarcity, more urgency, more impulse, and overcome their objections, okay? That's what I would do. Okay, let's go to the next one. Who's next, who's next? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let me refresh and let me see uh, who's kind of standing out. Again, there's so many of you, I can only do so many. Okay, um, let's see. I'm looking for people that write words next to it. Um, Jay Davey wants me to check the copywriting there, or uh, check the copywriting cat astronaut. Uh, please give me important feedback. Can you give me some advice on how this product description looks? Okay, let's see. This is a little bit more specific. How does my product description look? So I can do a little bit better with that. Um, deal mine. Basic theme here. Um, so let's go look at the product description. Let me first put this in the, in the link. If you guys want me to choose your store, try to say something along with your store link that helps it stand out. So deal, do, uh, deal mine. Let's see. Okay, deal mine, catalog nursery, voting braces. So good use. Um, good job with having a general store with niche specific categories. Okay, that's that was a good job. Um, let's look at descriptions. Lava stone beaded cross bracelets. Um, free shipping. So in this case, uh, you're charging six dollars and ninety five cents and doing free shipping. So. I'm assuming you must be getting this product um, you know, for a couple bucks or whatever, right? Lava Stone Bracelet is a must have for anyone who loves Jesus. Um, I mean, I don't know about that. That's kind of a bold statement. It's like, do you love Jesus? You must have this bracelet. I don't know that that's the selling point. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use that sentence. I mean, think about it. Just think, think about the statement there. It's like, if you love Jesus, you must have this bracelet. It just doesn't make sense. Um, you know, you want, it, you want to come at a different angle, okay? Uh, right now we're having a massive 50% off sale. The sale ends soon. We only have this once a year. You found it, lucky you. Our sale items always sell out fast. Get yours now before we run out. Um, so I'd say uh, for the descriptions, good use of bold text on important keywords. Good use of uh, attempting to drive urgency. urgency in your ad copy, okay? Um, that helps out a little bit. I think you could you could improve this a lot by um, really, really kind of giving some details about this. Like, what are some details about this product? Why is this a good product for Christians? Why this little plus? That's not even really like a cross. It's more like a basic like little plus, um, you know? And and the 50% off sale, this kind of stuff's, this kind of stuff's good. Um, these pictures are okay, but you should really look into some like, more urgency, more scarcity, more urgency, countdown timers, stuff like that, longer description. Um, and maybe if there's a video that shows this product, put it there. Maybe if there's some other pictures you can find that are a little bit better than just close-ups of this. Um, but I think overall that's pretty good. Pretty good job overall. Okay, who's next? Let's refresh. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, let's do this one. Shop travel start. I need to know if my shop is easily is easily shopped. Also, I'm wondering if the category um, headings are not well organized. Okay, so let's look at the organization of this site. And the name was Elizabeth. Okay. So um, 
Okay, so let's take this site. Okay, Elizabeth, uh, right off the bat, pop-ups everywhere. Um, right off the bat, pop-ups everywhere, not a good idea. Okay, um, for most of you, you guys, for most of you, I don't even use pop-ups like this, okay? I, I don't suggest it. I mean, a 10% off pop-up, maybe. But, I mean, what, are you, are you killing it with email? Like, like, the only reason you would really want a bunch of people, like, you want them to shop. You want to make money. If they go and they put this in right here, you don't make money from that. So you want, you want money right now. What are you going to do with a list, right? Unless you're sending, the only reason a list would be good is if you're sending daily emails. If you're literally sending daily emails to that list, then sure, but if you're not even sure what you're gonna do with a list yet, then there's no, re no reason to collect one. Your main goal is to make money. So this right here is an obstacle. This right here is gonna turn people off if your goal is to make money. This is gonna come into, into factor when you've, when you've got it dialed in a little bit more and we know what you're doing. So I'll put no thanks. Um, and then this right here, receive text from us. I, I mean, I think that's overkill. Unless, unless, of course, if you have a really good texting system set up. If you got an autoresponder setting up, now in that case, if you're going for text messages, I would say just go for this. Don't even bother with the pop-up. Go for If you really have a really strong text messaging system, start right there. But uh, generally speaking, um, generally speaking, unless you are sending daily emails and daily texts that convert, then I wouldn't suggest hitting them up right off the bat with all of that, okay? That's my general advice, okay. So let's take a look, this, this anchor is good, but it's so huge, I don't even see the store. So the main logo is so big that I don't even see the store. Consider a smaller one, okay? Um, and then also it doesn't, you know, just consider a small, like consider making it like literally like small. It's a, it's a nice logo, but make, just make it small up here, okay? Um, categories, Amber's picks, no. You don't wanna put your own name, Liz's picks. I don't think that those are gonna help because people don't know who you are. So the only reason these would be good picks is if people knew who you were, right? So, um, you know, you could do like, you know, instead of Amber's picks, you know, you could do like, you know, come, come up with one category, you could put all these picks in, but people don't know who you are, so to them, you're, you're instantly hitting them up with some random person, Amber, some random person, Liz. I don't know, I don't know if that's helpful. Sexy is as sexy does. I, I, don't, I don't know that I get what that category is. Um, let's see what's inside of it. See, when I click on things, I can't even see them. So I have, it, you're making me work. So like so, instead of sexy is as sexy does, you could just say, the, what are these? Sexy outfits. I mean, I would probably use a category like sexy outfits, you know, something like that. Um, Unmentionables, maybe people do understand unmentionables. So maybe that's a girl thing. Um, you know, maybe you're gonna put like, um, maybe unmentionables could work. Accessories, sometimes you're using title case, sometimes you're using lowercase. I would, I, would, I would use one across, this should be title case. Um, and this is good. I like, I like what you've got going on here. I like that you have a good product selection. So. Um, I like that you have a good product selection. Lots of products. Um, keep title case on all your um, top navigation. Um, consider better category names that the average visitor would understand. Because you're, you're really all about you know, um, no need to brand your own names since nobody knows who you are. I mean, even if somebody knew who you were, like let's say you were the most popular, um, let's say, what's wrong? Let's say you were the most popular Amber in the, or the most popular Liz on the planet. Well, if they just arrive here, they have no idea. You know, that's the thing. They just don't, they don't have any idea that that's, that that's you. So it's not really helping that much. Um, you know, let's see, hair. Okay, hair products. Okay, so generally speaking, it's pretty good. Okay, so let's let's look at like an, an individual. Let's look at some of these um, individual things. 
Malaysian version, Malaysian virgin hair for bundles, for bundles, human hair extensions. I mean, that title's not really selling me very well. I'd probably come up with a better title um, for that. But that, I mean, unless you think that that title is like exactly what sells it. But this is your, this is your sales aspect. This is really expensive. So you're selling a very expensive product. Um, also, the more expensive your products are, the more risk you're gonna take. What happens if you collect this amount of money and you give this to a, um, a drop shipper and then something goes wrong? You know, you're, you're, you're at risk. It's, it's always better to sell cheaper products when you're new because you're gonna be at risk for a high dollar amount. You're gonna be at risk for this. So selling more expensive products is not always better until you get some experience. And if, you, if you're selling more expensive products, this vendor better have a really good rating. There's no way I'm gonna, like, imagine if 10 customers bought this, and let's say your cost was $50 a piece, okay? There's no way I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send $500 of my cash to some unknown vendor on AliExpress. You know what I'm saying? So like, like if I were to go over here to AliExpress, and let's just type in um, whatever that product was, Malaysian hair extensions, okay? So let's just type in like, Malaysian virgin hair. Okay, so you know these Malaysian version hair. Let's see which. Let's see if there's one that's the same one. Is it this one here, Malaysian version hair? That basically looks very similar. Um, it's this one here that says low hair. Also, the fact that it has their branding all over it, you you should you you could you should use the ones that don't have their branding on it. Okay, so see how this says like low hair. Let's see if I can find that exact one. So here's some long hair. I don't know. Um, let's see. Let me put in. Let me see if I can find the same exact one for you because I think this is important for a lot of people to understand. Um, let me see. So Malaysian version. Let's just type in this whole thing and see what comes up. Okay, let's see. See, all these have, these all have like branded things on them. Low hair, 100% human hair or L hair. I don't even know what that is. But this is important for you guys to understand um, that Let's see, virgin hair for bundles, human hair extensions. I'm spending a little bit of time on this just because I want you to really kind of understand it. I, I'm not seeing the exact one, so I'm gonna use another one, okay, for the example, since I don't see the exact, exact, exact one. But um, there's a lot of these, right? So let's just, let's just look at these real quick. So some of these, some of these have five star ratings, some have three, or diamond ratings, I mean. So a lot of these sellers are pretty good. Um, make sure it has e-packet. If you're choosing an item, make sure it has e-packet, but if, if you're choosing a more expensive item, I would definitely go with, um, and then also, see how a lot of these are like $28, $25? You might wanna try to start with some less expensive ones if you can, just to get, just to get familiar with it. But when you, when you find one, once you find someone that you like, let's say, um, and you see how they have branding all over it, you know, their, their whole logo, um, Shenghua Malaysian hair. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna contact them and see if you can get um, pictures without all the branding. So see how these pictures have the branding on them? Their watermarks all over them. You're gonna wanna just, all you gotta do is just contact the, uh, contact the person, contact the vendor and, and ask for the pictures without the, um, ask for with, without the items on it. So you got this whole, this whole vendor. If this is like the vendor you're gonna use right here, you can go and you can like visit this vendor's page, um, their hair franchise store, and if this is the one you want to use, you can feature a lot of their products if, if, you, if, you, if they check out, and just contact them and tell them what, which products you want to sell without the, um, without the branding on it, without the watermarks on it. So you can basically ask, hey, can, can I, I'd like to feature your products on my store, but without the watermarks on it. And a lot of times they'll send it to you without the watermarks. That will help. So now you don't have watermarks all over it because you know, sometimes that can hurt your, sometimes that can hurt your sales. Okay. Now on top of that, you've got a high price point. So it's going to be harder to convert high prices. Um, you know, this isn't really the best copywriting. Do you just need something to get over the hump? Are you having a bad hair day? You know, like that's not why people want to buy. So what you want to do is do some research and, and, and go into a site that sells hair extensions and look for some ad copy that they're using. So this is a copy paste direct from AliExpress, okay? So what you wanna do is instead of copying and pasting direct from AliExpress, um, what you're looking to do is you're looking to write up some long form copy, okay? And you wanna put in some scarcity and urgency. So what I would say is write 
product descriptions that convert better. When charging high prices, be sure to use very trusted vendors. Higher prices are harder to convert from cold traffic. Um, uh, you know, treat your individual product pages like sales pages. Focus on ad copy. Use more urgency and scarcity. Consider some plugins that can help with this. Um, do your best to request copy, uh, request uh, watermark free images. Okay, and, and, and if you can't get watermark free images, you might be able to go in and, and find the same kind of images. Um, you know, you might be able to find the same images in Google. Okay, so you might be able to like literally see like whatever this is, lace frontal closure with bundles, Brazilian deep wave frontal closure. Um, you might be able to like literally just go to Google and and possibly like see if you can find the same the same images. So see how watermark, 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 watermark. But there's a, 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 every once in a while there's going to be ones like like this one here without watermarks. Okay, so if this is the same one, do you see how I just well here it has a watermark down here actually. Um, so you might want to like you you might need to like look at that or whatever. But that's you, you're looking for something that doesn't. If you can find them without watermarks, that's even better. So I don't know enough about these hair extensions or whatever. But if this if this, if if any of these pictures like if these pictures right here of the same stuff, you want to try to use stuff without, um, you know, with, without the watermarks on them when possible, okay? They'll generally convert better without the watermarks. Like here, here's an image without watermarks. So you see the difference? Like they're kind of like, you can, you can find them. Okay, that would be my advice for you. All right, let's just do a couple more um, site reviews. Hopefully you guys are getting um, help from this. Okay, please can you look at my store? Let's look at this one real quick. Women's bags women's handbags style.com okay women's handbags style.com let's do a quick review of this one okay right off the bat sign up for updates um, you know let's let's talk about that okay um, pop up right off the bat unless you have a very good email campaign don't ask for an email address for updates. It would be better to offer a 10% off discount or to give the visitor something very valuable for free in exchange for their email address. Now the exception is obviously is unless you do have very good email campaigns. Um, if you have very good email campaigns, then sure. Okay, so let's kind of keep going through it. Um, let's close this. Let's do no thanks. Okay, free shipping. So you're running free shipping site wide. Uh, free shipping site wide could be a good strategy as long as your products are marked up enough to cover the shipping as well. Remember, higher priced products are harder for visitors to add to the cart. Okay? See, a lot of you guys think that people won't pay a lot of money for shipping. Well, they don't even know how much shipping is until they check out. So if you're, having, if you're not getting a lot of people adding to the cart, it might be because they price your products too high. Okay? So um, let's look at this. Good color, good use of colors. Good use of color combinations. I like that. Okay, featured products, um, nice, good featured products, bags. Okay, get connected. I don't know that that's get connected. Uh, get connected box is bare, not necessary. Would be better to show more products. Okay, get connected. It's like nobody wants to get connected. So it's not gonna convert, it's not gonna work well, it's just taking up space. Um, you know, you, this is an opportunity to sell people. You want to you want to all you want to treat your site like a sales site. See what you're doing here with all these? That's good. So uh, good credibility with all the credit card logos. Okay, um, good credibility 
with all the credit card logos. Okay, so you got your collections, your shipping, this and that. Okay, let's look at something. Okay, a fashion shoulder bag. Okay, hold on. I've got a, I've got a pop-up going on. Um, hang on, we have this offer just for you. Now, this is interesting. I'm not, I'm not really a fan of it, but I'm not opposed to testing it. So what you've done here is um, you've got an app that essentially has taken four products and has basically created a bundle for you. So $60 plus, you know, let's say $50, it's 110 plus another, another 50, it's like 160, plus 35, it's like 195. But you know what, I don't, I don't even get it. What's all, what, there's not even, I don't even see the offer. I just did the basic math in my head. There's no big savings. So if you're bundling, if you're just telling me to, to spend $200, I'm a brand new visitor, I clicked on one item and you're asking me to spend $200, I don't know you, I don't, so here's the thing, I don't, you need to, you need to know, like, and trust somebody. So um, the bundle app, pop-up interesting idea but it's a turnoff for me as a visitor I don't know you yet don't like you don't trust you and so far you just want my email address for no reason and you want me to buy four products instead of me just looking at one and you want me to add them to the cart and I haven't even seen the descriptions of what they are yet so I'm not a fan of that plus if you are offering a bundle there should be a significant savings or deal in it for me which there wasn't so for those reasons I'm not into that now, I should have just landed here. Had I just landed here, you would have had a higher chance to convert me, okay? Because this is clean, okay? Now, it's got watermarks on it. We just covered watermarks, so I don't need to cover that anymore, but this would be better without watermarks. In fact, you could have just cropped this image. You could just take, this, you could just take your own cropped image of that because you don't need that on the top. That's not helping at all. Um, description is lacking. This description is lacking. It looks like it's just a copy-paste. Um, product descriptions lacking looks like just a copy and paste from Aliexpress this is your opportunity to sell visitors on why they should buy that product especially for the price you are selling many of these products for justify it okay you want to justify it okay what else the page is lacking urgency, scarcity, and impulse, okay? So uh, the product pages are lacking urgency, scarcity, and impulse. Um, you know, like if you, go to, if you go to like, you know, if, if you go to another site, like let's, let's just go to a random product here. I don't know, let's just go to like a Wander Wallet. Who even knows what this thing is? A little Wander Wallet. Okay, Wander Wallet. $54, now it's only 13. Hurry, there's only 23 left in stock. It's got a countdown, uh, suddenly it's like countdown timer. It's giving me a discount price. They got, a full, they got some credibility. They got a full description here, making me excited. They got really clean pictures with no watermarks. I can really clearly see it. They've got security symbols, making me feel really good about it. And look at all these pictures, making me feel like I know a lot about this product. So that's an example of what I mean by creating more urgency and more scarcity, okay? Overall, um, overall, I like the look and feel of the site. Okay, let's go to a new one. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, let me go and let me refresh. I don't know how much longer, you guys. I got to jam in a minute. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this, though. I've never done this before live like this. Um, can you please check out the product description? I've been getting... Crazy traffic, but not a lot of sales. Okay, Jay Davey, let's look at your product description. Okay, let's do binaryinbound.com. Binary inbound. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. Binary inbound. First, let's go to the, the, the thing. Binary trends, a little logo here. Um, 
logo is very small, hard to tell. I'd make it pop more for credibility. Okay. Um, I noticed the logo is different than the site URL, which is a little confusing. Not much. That's not a major thing. Okay. Keep the trend lose lose the price. That's uh, some misspellings. Loses L O S E. Um, some words uh, could be spelled differently. I'll bet some of you don't even know that though, right? Like some people think the word uh, lose is L-O-O-S-E. It's just L-O-S-E. This is loose. Like something is very loose. You know, like that's, that strap is loose on her. Take advantage of our limited time free products. Just pay shipping. So is the whole, like, let's see. So right here, the, the, the concept is that the whole entire site is free free products. So let's see if this is the thing. If everything on the site's free, let's go check this out. Take advantage of our limited time free products or there better be a way to be able to get in there. So right off the bat, that's not free, there's free. Okay, so it's a little confusing. You're telling me that there's free products but they're mixed in with products that cost money. A little confusing. Um, good, use of a, good use of good imaging though. Okay, I do like this. Categories clean. The overall imaging, overall, Clean and simple and elegant look and feel, okay? So overall, that's good, okay? And then you've got um, you know, all these individual product pages. That's good. The nice, like, footer, okay? So, so things look pretty clean there. Um, all right, so let's go to the individual product page you wanted me to check out was this Cat Astronaut Travel Backpack. Cat Astronaut Travel Backpack. Um, I wouldn't lead with this picture. This picture is not selling at all. Um, I would lead with a better picture, something like this. This picture actually shows a cat in there. It's a much better picture. So even this picture, okay? This, this first picture that you have right here, this, this is not a good appealing picture. So I would go with, and also this, if you can find a video for this, this will be a lot better. Um, but I, what I would do is I would start with um, product, pages, use the best image as the first one that they see, okay? So use the best image. Um, a little pricey, but it's okay. Uh, let's see, you got different colors, different kinds, da, da, da. Okay, not sold in stores, only available online, tax and shipping included. This offer is not available. So you don't have to say tax and shipping included, you would want, you'd want to say, so basically what you're saying is free shipping that this product has free shipping. That'll make a lot more sense to people. Um, you could put that in, in all caps like this or whatever. This product currently has free ship, you know, um, buy today and get free shipping on this product if, you're, if, that's, your, if that's your offer. Um, but you might even wanna try doing, you know, take, why, why free shipping? I mean, you might wanna do 39, $39.95, lower it even cheaper, and then put like $7.95 shipping on it. Okay, that might even work more. At least you'll know if people are adding it to the cart. Um, new, order your products now and pay later with future pay. You know, I'm not a huge fan of future, future pay, um, but you can try it and see how it goes, goes for you. But, you know, you, you can try it out. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and say one thing or the other about it. You can go ahead and try it out. It's, you're all, everybody's free to experiment their own. Guaranteed safe checkout, good use of, um, good use of safe checkout graphic to establish more trust, okay? Um, description, double breathable mesh and transparent semi-sphere window design, you can change mesh window and something. This is too, too confusing. So, description is too confusing. Run on sentences to form long, hard to read paragraphs. It looks and feels like a copy uh, paste description. Doesn't really sell me. Okay, so um, example, the, um, the cat backpacks, right? Cat, what are these things? Cat backpacks? So cat travel backpacks. Okay, example, cat travel backpacks. This is a very unique and very original item. So sell people on it, okay? Um, appeal to people and their emotions. 
you are targeting cat owners. So explain why this product is helpful. What is the pain slash problem? What is the solution? You know, is traveling with a cat difficult? Are the other options available frustrating? Are they so frustrating that it's not even worth it? Can you relate to people and their pain that they are facing? Can this problem solve that pain and give them a solution? Is this product safe? Is it legal? Is it ethical? Are there reviews of people uh, who use it and love it? Um, is there a video to see this in action? How can I be sure that my cat will love this product? Essentially, sell me on all the reasons why I must have this today, okay? You gotta sell me on it. I'm not, I'm not sold with these product details. All these are is product details. Like I'm just, I'm, product details aren't gonna sell me. Um, you know, you've, you've, gotta, you've gotta like really, you've gotta really drive these out, okay? Um, you, you, you've gotta, um, you've, you've, gotta, you've gotta bring these out, not, not just a run on sentence with these, like whatever these little, whatever these little breaks are, it makes it difficult to read. They just don't feel like, um, like if stopping your pet from escaping in your car is a big deal, that then, you know, break that out and, and make it so that when somebody's reading this, this is difficult to read. When somebody's reading this, they need to be able to, you know, really be able to kind of see, really be able to see and understand that. And remember, most people are going to be coming from, um, most people are going to be coming from mobile, Okay. So most people are going to see, see your site like this, okay? They're going to see, you know, your little, they're going to see like your little logo right here. They're going to see this picture, which is why I thought a, a better picture would be, you know, I think something like this would be better, okay? Cat astronaut travel backpack, hottest pet trend 2017. Um, not sold in stores, da 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 da. See, the, the, the lines are a little bit broken here, but that's okay. But this, this could be cleaned up. I think that this whole thing should be, make it look good on mobile. And then you see how these sentences are just long. They're just very descriptive. Okay, customer reviews, my cat, that's good. I'm now able to take my cat with me anywhere I want. When shopping yesterday, I got so much attention from this bag, so much fun. That's good. So at least you do have one review. I haven't got down that far yet. So one review helps. Um, but overall, what I would do is I would, this, this could be like a controversial item. I mean, how is this person gonna feel comfortable? Maybe it's gonna be a cool item. So that's what you wanna do. You really wanna break this out and you really wanna get them, um, sell them as much as possible. Overall, good job. The store is better than most beginner stores. Okay, what is it, 352? I got time for one more. Let's do one more real quick. Okay, I'm gonna go basically have to just choose somebody at random. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do a refresh. And I got time for one more. Who's it gonna be? Bohemian jewelry, handbags, any help on my store offering fashion accessories, 50% off. I've been running for two months and I've got traffic with no sales. Okay, two months traffic, no sales. Please check mine. I need some feedback about pricing and products. Um, shop elegant Ellie. There's no description there. I probably would have chose that one, but you had no no description next to that. Uh, no, I can't even see a picture here. How does my overall store look? Description site like Bargainville Unlimited, Modern Swift. Give me advice about getting my first sale optimized for conversions. Set up by my daughter. Sales are mostly from the sparkling dark collection, but would like to know what you think about the Block D Sports. Okay, I like this description was really good. So this description was interesting. So I'm going to choose this one because they're saying sales are mostly coming from the sparkling dark collection, but they want to know about the sports sunglasses. Okay, I like that. So let's use this, let's use this shop right here as a, um, as a store. Okay, okay, what do we got here? Okay, myfivestarshop.com. 
my five star shop. So my five star shop.com. Let's go ahead and let's, let's go ahead and do this one. Um, right off the bat, uh, my first impression, impression, the store looks great. Okay. Without doing anything, it looks, looks great. Uh, and looks professional. Okay. So right off the bat, it looks great. It looks professional. I wasn't bombarded with pop-ups, you know, um, I wasn't bombarded with pop-ups, at least not yet. I might be, I'm gonna, but I wasn't bombarded with pop-ups. Um, great logo, great color designs, good theme choice, okay? A lot of good stuff so far, but we haven't really gotten into it. Um, you know, social proof starts coming in. Welcome to my store. I've been scouring away at deals. Really cool products. Um, darkness can shine too. Okay. I like it. I like where we're going here. So mo they're saying most of the sales are coming from the sparkling dark jewelry collection. So this is, this is where they're having so far most of their sales is from this collection. It's cool. These are really cool products. If you can find a good audience, these are great. Skeleton finger bracelet. Social proof is saying that this one's selling here. Um, skeleton finger bracelet, free shipping, nine ninety three. I like that it's in U.S. dollars right off the bat for me. That helps out significantly. So see, even though you have another options, you're defaulting to me. That helps. It's on sale. I like this um, timer. So great product. Um, great individual product pages. Good use of timer to create um, urgency. Um, the sales good. Good use of a uh, good use of. Good job with USD for me since I'm in America. Okay, that, that was a good. That was big for me. Description um, could be a little bit longer. This beautiful skeleton style finger bracelet adds a touch. Um, of McCaber, okay, so that's the niche you're probably targeting. Available in one size with adjustable fing finger rings. This unusual jewelry item is best suited to women's hands or smaller men's hands. So you're probably, your market's probably women that are interested in McCaber, uh, skeleton keywords, stuff like that, jewelry. Um, now available in silver or gold color. Um, I think you could do, I think you could add more to descriptions. Um, product descriptions could use more sales copy to convert more. Um, let's go. Let's keep scrolling down. Customer reviews, great. Good job using reviews. Using customer reviews. Okay, so so far looking pretty good here. Um, what else we got? What else we want to look at? Join the mailing list down there. Okay, let's go over here to this Block D Sports sunglasses, where you you want to try to sell stuff here. Okay, um, but right off the bat, I could already tell you. I mean, look at it. What like. Look at this compared to that other, that other item. We were just in another category. It's got kind of really cool, unique jewelry. Very specific niche specific. Very cool, unique jewelry. And then we go from that to a, top, uh, to a category that looks just very normal. Okay? It's like a very normal category. So right off the bat, you know, you, why, why do we even, I guess my question is why do we even need more sales here? Um, if you're having trouble finding, if you're, if you're targeting cyclists and you're having trouble targeting, um, if you're having really trouble targeting them and getting sales, then why even bother? You've got this other niche going really well. I would say, I would almost say like really drive home on this sparkling dark collection. I would say you can go even bigger um, with it and really build up a buyer's base there. Now the description's really good here. I do like that deep, deeper description of this. Um, I do like that. Um, you're targeting cyclists, but I don't see anything here about cycling. Okay, so um, glasses, targeting cyclists, but no imagery at all related to cycling. I don't feel like I'm on a cycling site at all, so it's not pulling out my passion. Okay, so like if you do the same thing, like blocked cy cyclist glasses like if you kind of go like cycling sunglasses and you go to like other stores that do that do these you know let's see 
So I come to this store, um, this store selling cycling sunglasses, but look, competitive cyclist, they really, they, they give me the feel that this is a cycling, they give me a little bit better of a feel like this is a cycling site. Now, not even, not even that much, but the fact they have bikes, the fact that they're also selling bikes, the fact they're all selling this gives me a little bit more of a clean look, but that, I think this site could even um, do a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, you, you know, I'm not saying to make a whole site just about cycling, but you could, you could solve that really well by like videos, like videos, pictures, see how this pictures of cycling right here? See how there's this Instagram thing and it's got all these pictures of cycling? You know, even stuff like that, like right here, blocked cyclists free shipping. Well, put pictures of cyclists wearing the glasses. You know, this is a blocked brand, right? So blocked cyclist, let's look. Let's go in over here and see. I don't, I don't know much about that brand or if it's a, if it's a real brand. Okay. Um, but there's probably pictures. If you can find like pictures of cyclists wearing those, those glasses, you know, I, I don't, maybe they're on AliExpress, maybe they're somewhere else. If there's something actually, you're saying these are cycling glasses, it's gonna help a lot if there's something having to do with um, blocked cycling. I don't, know what, I don't know enough about that brand, but like, you know, for example, you know, if this person here was, was wearing that whatever, um, this person crashed. I don't know if that's the best one to use, but you know what I'm saying? If somebody's wearing the sunglasses, that's, that's a start. If you can get a picture, I don't, I don't know if uh, blocked is, is spelled right. I don't know if, I don't know anything about this brand. Okay. But if you're able to do that, let me see black blocked glasses. Uh, yeah. So I don't even know why it's not showing up. I don't know. Maybe it's not a popular brand or what. And if it's not a popular brand, then why, then why try to sell it? If it's not a popular brand, why, why lead with the brand? You know, I, I'm having a trouble even finding um, in searches like very good, very good stuff. So if, 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 if the brand is not helping to sell it, then maybe, maybe come with like another feature, you know, maybe come with something different uh, and kind of sell it as like polycarbonate glasses or lightweight glass, lightweight glasses for cyclists or whatever it might be, right? So you're, you're, you want to try to learn, do a little bit more there. But at the end of the day, you got this collection, which is awesome. I would just focus more on this and you know, see what more products you can add in here. Look, my, my idea is like this. If you're successfully getting sales here, remember, all of this is just to experiment until you find something that's successful. If you're successfully finding sales, you wanna probably blow this category out, really to, uh, hammer in that targeting and jam on it. That would be my, my advice. Uh, my advice is to focus more on the category that you are successfully selling in, add more products to it, beef up the sales copy, convert more visitors to buyers, um, you know, find more related product categories that they would be interested in, okay? For example, okay, if you take something like this, um, you know, if you take something, they got the creepy necklace, darkness, they got all this kind of cool, they've got like, there's gonna be stuff in here, like you can hit like skeleton niches or whatever it says, or like take like McCaber. If I don't, I don't, Macabre, I don't know if I'm saying this right. I don't, I don't know this niche. So if I'm saying this word wrong, then, you know, it is what it is. I can only know so much things in the world. So, but you go over here to AliExpress and what I would do is I would type in that word um, and I would sell other stuff, okay? So like masks, um, paintings, posters, um, keychain of the, of the rib cage, you know, whatever. Like I would, I would come in and I would look, uh, print on demand. Uh, I mean, if you've found an audience that you can sell this stuff to, there's so much stuff you can continually sell to that audience, okay? So there's really a lot, you know, like, you know, or, or like skeleton, Okay, so now you got like more skeleton jewelry, skeleton necklaces, skeleton watches, um, lots and lots, lots of stuff, you know, really, really cool stuff. So if, if you've already got, you know, like if you've already got the, the deal, like look at this, like this product right here, this skeleton on a bike, you could be doing the same targeting that you're already doing, but intersect it with like motorcycles or intersect it with Harley Davidson's and offer something like this free plus shipping. You're already good. You're getting good at this audience. You don't need to drift around and try to be good at 100 different niches. 
I would say just dive in there and be good at the niche that you're in. Okay, that would be my, um, my advice. Okay, uh, that concludes today's session. Sorry for not being able to answer all the questions or review all of the sites. We will make an effort to do this at least once per week. If you enjoyed this hands-on process, let us know in the comments on this live stream. Okay? Um, so, if you have additional questions, ask them to the community, not to Chris Record. Post them as, as their own post in the group, in the 90 Day Challenge group. Um, when you post asking Chris Record a question, it likely will not be approved because Chris, myself, does not have time to answer all those questions for free. Instead, ask them generally to your peers in the group because that's how you will be more likely to get a good response to help you with your Shopify store. Okay, I'll see you guys on the next live stream. I'm looking forward to it. We had another great two-hour session here. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.